Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. In this session, we will discuss about Oracle Cloud EBS database migration. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Firstly, we will try to understand the migration strategy and then we will try to understand about database migration ways which are physical database migration, logical database migration, offline migration and online migration. Also, we will be going through the database migration methods and then we will try to understand about data transfer. Post that, we will try to understand more about storage gateway. And finally, we will be going through connectivity options which are public network, VPN and fast connect. So we have taken a clip from one of our step-by-step -step training program where we cover how to build, manage and migrate eBusiness Suite R12 on Oracle Cloud. In this session, our expert will be talking about Oracle Cloud EBS database migration. So now migration option. So migration strategy. So uh, what you need to uh, consider is application, whether it is a same platform or cross platform database, either it can be you can do the physical migration, logical migration online or offline data transfer. You can do it online or offline to the cloud. Okay, so let's see about it. So database migration, you can do the physical migration. Either you can do all the migration or uh, all or nothing approaches there. A source and target database on the same version and OS uh, uh, is also same. So that is what the physical migration is. If we come to the logical migration, it is like the selective approach. We can have it. Okay. So here usually we go with the export import way. Okay, we take the export of the entire database. Okay, there are some specific and specialized rule for uh, taking the export and export of the uh, EBS databases. Okay, so that that we need, we can consider and then we can migrate uh, move that uh, thing to the cloud. Now here your platform can be different. That is the reason why you are going for the logical migration. Okay, usually logical migration is only uh, you know we consider it when the during the cross platform, but other than that uh, we we usually go with the physical uh, database migration. Then you can go with an offline migration in which the source is taken offline, and then you are taking the backup of the databases and all, and then you are moving it. And then you can go with the online migration in which your source database is running on premise and then you are going to do the migration so that is like you know how you can do that you can go with an hybrid data guard way you can prepare the hybrid data guard like your primary is what your source database and then um, you, you can go ahead and create the data guard for your database on the cloud and once you are okay with all the things then you can completely shift from uh, you know uh, you can switch the role so there are a couple of uh, database migration methods which are available like the zero downtime migration you might have heard about it a lot so that is there way which is basically the physical migration and you can do it online so the zdm basically follows the same approach of creating the standby databases then move to autonomous database now i will not uh, you know go deep into that uh, autonomous database if you want to move your database to the autonomous database then Oracle has provided the MV2 ADB tool, which basically, uh, you know, uh, do your logical migration, take the export of your databases, and then via command line interface and the APIs, they they migrate it to the uh, autonomous databases. So we are not going to uh, consider that as of now because EBS is not yet certified with autonomous database. Okay. In future, it might be, but yes, as of now, with autonomous database, EBS is not certified. We have got a maximum availability architecture, MAA method, which Oracle say that okay, it's so the physical and online way. And then uh, we have got the data pump, which is again the logical one. The SQL developer, Armen, plug unplug, and remote cloning. So these are like few of the methods which you can have it uh, to migrate your databases to cloud. Okay, or if you want to load the data. So SQL developer is basically for small to medium when you want to load the data you you can just uh, use the SQL developer and upload the data uh, you use the SQL developer to to load the migrate the data. Then you have an Armen 
method where you are going to take the backup of your databases uh, that too you can take it uh, in the hot backup mode okay and then whatever the changes are there you can copy it that usually you do it plug and plug which is basically available for the pluggable databases uh, you know the method from 12c onwards but yes most of the uh, methods uh, you know mentioned for the database migration is not applicable for our ebs migration uh, ebs database migration because it has got uh, some specific requirement and then the remote cloning yeah okay, so data transfer like depending upon your choice or depending upon your volume what what volume of data you have you can transfer the database to the cloud via uh, you know vpn okay you can have a secure connection from your on premise data center to oracle cloud and can go ahead and uh, you know transfer the data either the over the encrypted channel which is via I, uh, vpn which gives you an ipsec vpn um, using the ipsec vpn protocol it gives you the connectivity the encrypted data which you are going to migrate it over the internet or you can have a dedicated uh, private connection that is what the fast connect is which gives you the consistent migration or consistent uh, bandwidth for migrating the data so from 1 gbps to 10 gbps you can have the bandwidth there then you can use the object storage as well for the migration so now if you see object storage is the public service which is there okay for the cloud but if you want to say have an encrypted way or you know the securely accessing your object storage then you need to go with the uh, public peering so that your data will be not going through the internet but going through the private channel then you can use the file storage service so for file storage service as well how it works is you need to have a vpn connection okay why you need to have a vpn connection for file storage service because file storage services you are going to mount that file storage on the uh, instances compute machines okay but that mount is only going to happen using the private ip not with the public ip so that is where if you have the vpn uh, connectivity there uh, between your on premise and the oracle data center then even for your on-premise machine you can mount the file system and copy the data to it because the file storage service you can add multiple compute instance to the same file system service so whatever you are migrating it from the on-premise can be moved quickly to the cloud or you can have a direct connect uh, uh, from using then uh, ssh from your on-premise to the cloud but that too uh, you know is required a lot of uh, things and yes vpn is definitely required the security then you can think about the storage gateway which is one of the service which oracle provides so what basically you do it here is you are going to have an instance uh, you know nfs mount you are going to uh, mount the file system and then whatever you are copying it to that machine at the back end via api calls that is getting copied to the object storage as well at the same time so whatever you are say going to copy it on your say backup files you are going to copy arm and backup that arm and backup files will automatically will will be going to the object storage using an api call so that is one of the you know, way you can have it and now storage gateway and all oracle has enhanced it as well so that is an again an online way of migrating the data then you have got an offline mode in which you have got the disk and the appliance the data transfer service so this is basically the online and the offline mode so here if you see the data transfer service in which oracle gives you uh, the uh, two options appliances and uh, the disk both are available depending upon the volume of your data and then the, on the online you have got the storage gateway okay so you can copy it so here we can just have a look of all these options so if you say have a hundred terabyte of databases okay or, or say the files the volume then you can use uh, the data transfer disk option but here the disk will be owned by you you need to buy the disk you need to perform the uh, copy from your end uh, oracle provides you the tools to copy it and then encrypt the hard disk and ship it to the oracle data center so that is the disk option is there 
the another option is the appliances option here you can see these appliances which are owned by oracle but will be given to you on rent but with no charge okay oracle provided free as of now so you can request oracle that uh, you know you have got around 150 terabyte of databases uh, or say the data is there and you want to copy it to the cloud so Oracle is going to ship this to you. You are going to copy the data, ship it back to Oracle data centers. Okay, and you can monitor each and everything right from, um, you know, the time when you have shipped it till the time it has reached whatever the chain was involved in that, the handover and all those has happened. Everything will be visible to you from the portal. So these devices are pretty secure. And in case if anybody has tried to open this device or so uh, it will be all visible there easily and so th that is all the security aspect has been taken care so you can use this and you can even like if you have got more than 150 terabyte of data you can even ask for the multiple appliances as well so we have used this appliances of uh, you know recently in our uh, one of the uh, projects so uh, th that is what the migration approach we have followed yeah so you can monitor everything from here you need to create the transfer job and then you can see all the things here the disk and the appliances here this way right so storage gateway is basically if i uh, want to say uh, you know i will be just going with this one yeah so this is like an application server of your on premise okay what you have done is uh, you you have created one instance okay either this instance can be on premise or can be on cloud whatever wherever it is so it is like uh, using an nfs version 4 protocol Okay, so NFS mount you are going to create you are going to copy everything uh, You know uh, on this storage gateway and at the back end It use it uses the HTTPS connections to synchronize it with the object storage So this is how basically it works. So this is like I have got I am using an NFS file system and via NFS protocol I am going to copy the data here. So that once your data is copied it uses the rest api's call the call it at the backend and automatically sync the data to the object or the archive storage whichever bucket you have used it for the uh, uh, syncing your data so automatically from your on premise the data is getting shipped to the cloud like suppose i have uh, say a simple scenario i have migrated my complete uh, backup okay the standby database backup one first backup I have shipped it to the cloud okay by say data transfer appliances or so later i can use this say for copying my archives so all my archives are basically copying to the machine which is say on premise and at the back end those are all automatically getting copied to the object storage and from there i can use those uh, archives to uh, sync my database on the cloud so that is one one approach you can have it right so connectivity options you can use the public network so public network is basically like you know uh, the non secure over the internet you are going to use it like simply you are doing it on the free account okay and vpn and the fast connect are the uh, options which you know you can use it for making the uh, encrypted connection or say the private connection between your on-premise data center and the cloud data center so this is a brief about ipsec vpn how it uh, basically has so it supports okay so here it is mentioned the bgp is not supported but so it supports the static routing as well as the uh, dynamic routing both are supported for the ipsec vpn so ipsec basically it uh, you know creates an encrypted tunnel okay the secure tunnel it is going to create between your data center and the oracle data center and through that the data is transferred so when it is going to be over the internet but it is going to be in the encrypted data so a secure one like usually for in the organization you set up the vpn like if you want to connect it even from your home they will give you the vpn you know username and password so that means you are going to connect to their network once you have connected to the vpn and then you are going to uh, you know uh, transfer anything or file transfer or anything happens so that means you have created the secured channel between your 
end and your company data center end and then you are connecting and working so same way you are going to have this ipsec vpn uh, you know setup between your data center and the cloud data center and, and the fast connect Fast Connect basically uh, is going to so you know if you want to understand this the Fast Connect is like your lease line like your internet lease line if you are going to take they will say that uh, you know it is going to give you the consistent connectivity you will be the only user uh, who will be uh, using the uh, say 10 M 10 Mbps line I have taken so it is not going to be shared between the one similarly your fast connect is like a lease line the private connection which is only for you it is not being shared and that is the reason you will get the consistent bandwidth but in the ipsec vpn if your internet get fluctuate your transfer speed also get fluctuate ipsec vpn gives you around 400 to 500 uh, uh, mbps speed max that that is what uh, uh, yeah, you know oracle mentions that up to 400 or 500 mbps you can expect but beyond that it is difficult but with the fast connect you can get a consistent uh, 1 gbps connection or you can go up to uh, uh, 10 gbps so it is like incremental of 1 gbps you need to get the ports there you need you are going to pay for the ports so you can take 1 gbps port or you can take two 1 gbps ports so you will be having two channels of 1 gbps each so like that you can have up to 10 gbps we have put down everything in the step by step training program including the basic concepts that one should be knowing you will be introduced with ebs on oci deployment architecture oci concepts for application dba networking for cloud application dbs ebs cloud manager and provisioning managing ebs cloud manager and cloning migration ebs high availability and disaster recovery on oci in this eight week roadmap, we take you from basics to advanced level along with the CV preparation tips. Once you are done with the training program, then you can start preparing for your CV and start applying for jobs. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on job support. So if you want to build, manage and migrate e-business suit R12 on Oracle Cloud and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step by step training for you that includes hands on labs, including exam preparation, and the most important part one year on job support if you are interested in this program then i would highly recommend you to attend our free class which covers future of ebs why to learn ebs on cloud ebs cloud manager overview and many other topics if you are interested in this free class you can visit k21academy.com slash ebs cloud 02 you can also find the link in the description